In the US, the standard Peloton bike is $1,895. The Peloton Bike Plus is $2,495. So that's a 32% uplift on the already premium price of this, the standard bike. Now, weirdly in Germany, the Bike Plus is only 25% more expensive, but in the UK and Canada, the Bike Plus is 32% more expensive than the standard bike. So if you're debating whether you should get the standard Peloton bike or the Bike Plus, I guess a good question to ask is, is the Bike Plus 32% better? Let's find out. Just in case this is a long video, I think it might be, I'm gonna put it into chapters. So that means you can skip any chapters that aren't quite relevant to you and move on to the next bit. But please make sure you stay around for my final thoughts because the difference in price actually isn't quite as much as you think it is. The first question you should ask is which one of these will get you fitter? So if you buy the standard bike, you will get sweaty and out of breath. If you buy the Bike Plus, you'll get sweaty and out of breath. All the off the bike content for both of these bikes is identical. So as long as you follow the guidance and the instructor in the workouts, you will get equally as fit with either bike. Next is screen rotation. The Bike Plus has this very clever bracket on the back which allows you to rotate the screen all the way around. And I just love the way that it just nonchalantly goes past the handlebars you think it's gonna hit, but no. And this is a really good feature of the Bike Plus. So if you're looking to do strength workout or yoga at the end of the bike, rather than having to do it with the bike in the way, which you do really with the, um, the standard bike, you've got to get right behind it and then you can't really see the screen because the bike's there. You can turn the screen around and then just give it a tilt down to where you're working out. So this is a good feature. I don't use this feature. The only time I rotate this screen is for filming videos. It, it just sits in its normal position otherwise. The Bike Plus screen is much better than say an iPad or a phone. However, it's nowhere near as good as a large TV. So if you've got a 32 or a 40 inch TV knocking around somewhere, probably in the spare bedroom and an old fire stick under a Nokia 3310 in a drawer somewhere, you're going to get a much more immersive experience on a large TV like this than on your bike screen. Now, if you've only got uh, one screen in the room you're in, which is this one, then it's absolutely fine. The swivel feature is, is fantastic. It, it, it will really make your workouts easier. If you've got access to a bigger screen, then I would use that. And to further compound things, <laughs> with the standard Peloton bike, you can actually buy a, uh, a bracket which enables you to swivel the screen just like the Peloton Bike Plus. I've made a video all about this and I'll link to the bracket and also the video in the description. If you're enjoying this video, I'd ask that you just hit the like button. It really helps the channel and it really helps more people see the video. If you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe as well. That really helps the channel out. If you're really, really enjoying this video, then feel free to buy me a coffee. I'll put a link in the description, but I think I will probably spend the money on a new Peloton drink I found. Next is screen quality. So here they are side by side. You may not have seen this before in a YouTube video. Um, and contrary to what many people believe and also what I thought when this bike first came out, this isn't 4K. Both of these screens are 1080p. And just in case you can't see what I can see, I might turn the light off for a sec. Um, there's not an awful lot in it apart from screen size. So the Peloton Bike Plus on the left here, the screen does look a little bit brighter, I would say. Um, however, the image quality is about the same between the two. So this bike does have an anti-glare coating and it shouldn't um, get smudged as easily. However, I'm sure it's there, but I haven't really noticed it. If we look at the screen size as well, obviously this one is bigger. The only reason why this one is higher is because it's got the swivel bracket on it. Um, 
But when, when I, I use this, I have 300 rides on this bike, the standard bike. There wasn't a day that I thought this screen was too small. It always felt fine. This screen is bigger, so 21.5 inches uh, uh, from there to there versus 23.8 inches. This is better. So when you're on the bike, this does feel uh, more immersive, I would say, because it's taken up more of your field of vision. Don't forget that when you're riding, you're actually quite close to the screen as well. So this is certainly a better experience than this, but until I got this, I was very happy with this. Next, I wanna look at the performance of the tablet. So these are just Android tablets. Uh, the Peloton Bike Plus has twice the RAM and a faster processor, supposedly quite a bit faster. Now, Peloton have said this is for future proofing, which I'm sure is right. But there's the consideration I would make is this device isn't a high-end PC. Neither of these are high-end PCs. Their sole purpose is, the sole purpose, unless something changes, is to stream Peloton video content. So does the extra RAM and processor performance really make much of a difference? After all, we are not mining for Bitcoin here, are we? In this test, I'm going to work both down here. I'm down here on the floor. <laughs> so I'm gonna see how quickly they open up a workout. Here's the bike plus, here's the bike. So I'm gonna go for a scenic ride. I'm gonna press more. Well, that was the same, wasn't it? Okay, let's just view the routes. Slightly more lag there, but not much at all, really. Let's look at this ride. A bit slower there. And let's start this ride. Oh, I didn't press them at the right time. Let's try again, hang on, let's start. One, two, three. So a noticeable difference on this. This is slow, isn't it? This one hasn't even come on yet. There we are. But when you're in the ride, they are the same. Once you're up and running, you're not gonna see a difference. Let's see about starting classes. So that's quite quick from both. And the skip session. Let's hit start, Just trying to get the same time, coordinate. So when it comes to sound, this one is not very good. So the speakers on this, they're okay. They're okay at best. The speaker system on this, you've got a speaker across the top, you've got a woofer in the back as well, is a lot better, a lot, lot better. It's still not a Sonos, but it is a lot better. The other difference is connectivity. So this is Bluetooth 4.0 and this is Bluetooth 5.0. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so when you've got your AirPods in, uh, you can't tell the difference. Uh, if you walk a long way away from this one, like a long way, it still works. This one doesn't work as well. But so for day-to-day -day use, you will not notice a difference. What you will notice though, so we're an Apple family, so we wear um, Apple AirPods and AirPod Pros. Um, if you've got your AirPods on here, 10 out of 10 volume will probably be too loud. It does get quite loud on here. However, this is like a bit old school Android when they didn't like talking to each other, like they're like in-laws or something. So they got along, they would stay in the same room together, but it wasn't as smooth as it could be. So if you have Apple AirPods or Apple Pros on this, the original Peloton bike, 10 out of 10 volume is a bit like six out of, six out of 10 volume. It's just not quite loud enough. All my other headphones, I've got some Bose, they're fine. Some other, other headphones, they're fine. It's just Apple headphones, in my experience, do not play that well with the original bike. Another upgrade is a video chat. I'm gonna do this bit quickly because I don't, think, I don't know anyone that uses this. So when you're in a ride, if you're in a ride with a friend or something like that, and they're in their house, you're in your house, you can video chat them. So you press the camera icon and you can see them in the corner. They're just covered in sweat and they're out of breath and so are you. No one looks great, you're all chins. So this has got a better camera and microphone set up for video chats. Uh, it is a lot better than this one. But I mean, like I said, I don't know anyone that uses video chat through the, through the Peloton tablet. 
Now my most favorite thing is the auto follow feature. Let me show you. Here's the standard Peloton bike. And as you can see, this is very easy to turn. Very easy. And it controls the magnetic brake there. So if, you, if, if I do that, you might be able to see it there through the smoke glass. As I mentioned, it is super easy to turn. The Bike Plus is electronic. So as I turn, you should be able to hear it adjusting. So this is an electronic adjustment instead of a manual one, just as easy to turn. With auto follow, you can see here that the instructor has called a range. You can see this on both bikes uh, of here, 47 to 67. What you get on the Bike Plus is this padlock. And if I press this, it should put my resistance within this range. So as you can see, it's put it right in the middle of the range there. I wasn't really that bothered about this feature. However, it is just really, really good. I would explain the difference of being like having cruise control in a car, where it's just great if there's no one else is about, uh, but if someone breaks, you'll rear end them, going to then adaptive cruise control. So when you're driving along and the traffic ebbs and flows, uh, so does your car and you, you can sort of widen your horizons and actually take in a, a lot more of what's around you. So this feature is excellent. And on this case, I'm right in the middle. So between 42 and 62, so it's put me at 52. But if I wanted to go slightly lower on that range, then what would happen would be that every time she uh, calls a different range out, I'd be at the lower end of that range. Or if I wanted to go higher, I'd be at the higher end of that range, but it would auto follow what the instructor is telling me to do. So I would say this unexpectedly to me, is a standout feature of the Bike Plus. On the standard bike, if you want to make adjustments to your seat or your handlebars, you've got these. These are fairly easy to adjust and quite, quite easy. On the Bike Plus, you've got these. So this is just a slightly slicker and better system than on the, the bike. Next is Apple Gym Kit. So if I start a workout, um, I can hold my watch up to here. You probably heard that. And then confirm on my watch. And then it puts my heart rate, skip the intro so it should come on. It puts my heart rate and the zone I'm in on the screen. And as you can see, my heart rate's at 89. Perhaps I need to sit down. And I'm in level one, but this is a really good feature. You get the drive score across there as well. And you can do this with the standard bike as well, which a lot of people don't realize. There's a couple of apps you can use, um, which uh, you might have to watch an advert unless you pay for the premium one. And some people have said connectivity is sometimes an issue. I don't like wearing a heart rate monitor or here or here. I've got a really good monitor here, so I just want to use this. I use uh, Watchlink, which is a fantastic product. And in my home gym, that just sits here under the speaker. You can just about see it there. And when I walk into the gym, I just press the complication on my watch, start a stationary cycle, and then it links from here to the watch link to the bike. There's my heart rate on the watch, and it's matching there what's on the bike. So essentially the same thing. It's really reliable. I've used it for a while now. I'm really pleased with it. And unlike the Apple Watch integration, if you're doing a boot camp class, so where you might be half on the cycle and half off, um, weight training, um, it works still, whereas Apple, uh, the Apple integration doesn't work for some reason. I've, I've made a video about this, I'll put it in the description and link you to it and also the watch link if you're going to go for the standard bike but want to use your Apple Watch as a heart rate monitor. When it comes to build quality, they're both just excellent, really, really good. There's some design changes, so you can see the Peloton logo on here is different to the Peloton logo on there. That looks a bit slicker. And then this has got kind of like some frosted plastic features, whereas on the standard bike, you've got the kind of wire hangers for your weights. I've just added some shoe hangers there as well. So I don't think you need to have any worries about the build quality of the Bike Plus being better than the standard bike. They both feel and perform wonderfully well. For my final thoughts, I've done over 300 rides on this bike and it's always been enough for me. I would say more than enough. It's probably been the best investment I've made in my cardiovascular health and fitness ever. It is that good. I'm that impressed with the Peloton bike. 
Now, if the Peloton Bike Plus was available when uh, I bought this, I would have bought the Peloton Bike Plus just because that's kind of the type of person I am. I would see that that's got plus written after it and I'd say, well, it's got plus written at the end, so it must be better and I've just, I'd have just bought it. It is better. Is it 32% better? And it's, it's no better for your health and fitness. It's, you won't get any fitter, as I've mentioned at the start of this video. Um, it's not 32% better, but if you look at the overall cost over, say, five years, then that's actually not there's not that much difference in price when you add in the 39 dollars a month membership over the course of five years including the bike this bike comes in at four thousand two hundred and thirty five dollars and this bike comes in at, there's going to be an edit here because <laughs> i can't remember it so i'm gonna to have to look look at my script and then come back $4,835. So that's only a difference of 14% over the course of five years in the cost. So when you look at it that way, that actually makes the Bike Plus really good value because it is the latest and most upgraded bike. And over several years, that cost kind of evens itself out. So if you're planning to keep your bike that long, which I know I probably am, um, then I would say go for the Bike Plus because the longer you, you own it, the more that cost is kind of even down. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, as I've mentioned, please hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, um, please subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, thanks. I will be spending it on beer. Until next time, see you soon.